Hey y'all, I'm Tatum Harvel and I'll be doing your ENH sports interview. The basketball team is just finishing off their season after facing Carolina University over the weekend. The Wasps have ended with a 16-10 winning record. Being their first season facing Division II rivals, the Wasps are making great headway. And joining us from the team, we have sophomore guard Patrick Ananelli. Patrick, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. And so, Patrick, after winning in your all's first matchup, the team took a close 73-69 to loss to Carolina University to end the season on Saturday. And although the cards weren't in your all's favor, the team still battled it out to the very end. And Patrick, win or lose, how have you seen this grit and drive play out for your team all throughout the season? You know, we showed a lot of effort and intensity during that last game. We've had a lot of adversity the entire year. We've had injuries, illness, players leave the team. And the last game, it was good to go out with all we had. You know, there was nothing else we could do. It was our last game. Had to give 100% effort. And I was just proud of everyone on the team for the effort they showed. Yeah. And so as a team, when we talk about this grit and drive that you all have shown all throughout the season, it's boasted you a 16 to 10 winning record with your first time facing Division II competition. And as someone who has seen the Division III side of this game as well, was that expected? Based off of last year, I would assume a lot of people did not think we'd go 16 and 10 this year. But internally in the locker room, I think we, all the coaching staff, all the players thought we would have a great season this year. And Thankfully, we did. It was a very fun season, and I was, I'm very happy that we came out 16 and 10. Obviously, we could have done a lot better, but that's just how it goes sometimes. Absolutely. And as a leader and player on the court, has the move to Division II intimidated you or your skill set at all? Not really, because I always try to prepare to be the best I can be and prepare for the highest level. And the move to D2 was a very fun move for uh, the whole team. I mean. The D3 rules and D2 rules in the NCAA are completely different. We can work out sooner with the coaches and everything. And in D3, we wouldn't be able to see the coaches until maybe two or three months into the school year. And now we can see them in the very first month. So we've all worked very hard to be able to make this transition a lot easier. Yeah. And when you talk about preparing at the highest level that you possibly can, as a player that's went from D3 to D2, have you changed how you prepare any for the game to compete at a higher level? And what does that look like for you? I have changed a little bit of the way I prepare. I have to be a lot smarter because a lot of the players are a lot better at D2 than D3. So the way you play changes. You might not be able to do some things you were able to do at D3 uh, that you can in D2. So. It's just a lot of thinking and trying to be smart while on the court. Yeah. And as you look at that from a team perspective, what were some of the biggest challenges that you all faced this season with new competition? Like I said before, the, a lot of the players in D2 are a lot bigger and stronger and a lot better. So it, it was, that's mainly the big difference between D3 and D2. It's not so much uh, their skill set. It's mainly just how big they are. Yeah. Everyone is a lot bigger and faster. And that was a big adjustment for everyone on our team. How do you think your team maybe overcame that intimidation factor that came with the new transition? I think it was a lot to do with the coaching staff. They prepared us uh, well enough to be able to perform highly in the games. And they told us leading up to the games and stuff, this team's going to be very fast, very big. It's going to be a lot different than last year. And I think we all understood that and went out and tried to compete with them. Yeah, absolutely. And so with this transition, you all have tried to hone in on, your, on, your, on what you're so good at and be able to perform at the best level that you possibly can. So my next question is a fill in the blank question. So fill in the blank. As a team, we are at our best when we do blank. When we're playing together and having fun. You know, there's a, when you're not playing together as a team and you're not having fun, it's just not very good to watch. Like if you're a fan, you can just tell that it's, they're not playing well. And when we're moving the ball, it, it's it's a lot of fun to watch. I mean, if you've seen some of our games, we're a very fast-paced, high-scoring team. So we just like to run, run, and score. And that's what we did this year. Absolutely. So, Patrick, this is my last question, but as someone who may be a young player on this team, but has such a love and leadership role for this program, where do you hope to leave Emory & Henry basketball when you graduate? I hope that I can leave it as one of the top programs in the SAC conference. And that might be very difficult because the SAC is one of the best Division II basketball conferences in the country. But the only thing we can try to do is try to do 
as best as we can for the players coming up so that way they have it easier than we did. Absolutely, and thank you for all you're doing. Thank you for being here with us today, and congratulations on your season. We'll be so excited to watch you all play again next season. Thank and you. And thank you so much. This concludes our sports interview for EHC TV. I'm Tatum Harville, and we'll see you all next week.